Hey guys, what is going on and welcome back to another episode and another season of Club and Country. Yes, this is episode number 81 and today we return for season 5 with the lads from Perth as we begin a brand new campaign with our Scottish club. And I'm super excited for this, I'm super excited to bring Club and Country back. And in the first 2 or 3 minutes of today's episode guys, I'm just going to be discussing what's going to be happening on my channel in the next 2 to 3 months. Um, I'm bringing this series back obviously, uh, but I want to discuss in the first couple of minutes why and also like what's also going to be coming on my channel as well as I'll be starting some new series and uh, I just want to give you guys the heads up really uh, as a thank you I suppose for staying patient with me whilst I've not produced as many new things as I possibly could have done, but uh, hopefully you guys will understand what I plan to do and uh, and why. But the things you'll see on the screen whilst I'm talking though uh, are us getting into the new season, our objectives, you see them on the screen right now, uh, to finish in the top four, reached around the 16 in the FA Cup and also reach the knockout stage of the Champions League, our transfer budget, which is a measly £16 million. Pounds. Oh my goodness, when are we actually going to get some serious money? Where's the Champions League money, Chairman? Seriously. And uh, also a squad report. And also the news that Murray Davidson is going to retire come the end of the season. How gutting is that? Murray Davidson joining Macker in the heavens. He's going to retire come the end of the year. And that is such a shame. I say the heavens, he's not dying. But uh, still, that's, uh, that's such a shame that he's going to retire come the end of the season. But uh, yeah, um, so so in the next two or three months, guys, I've got a few new things coming to my channel, and uh, I want to discuss how I'm going to be planning my upload schedule. Now, I used to have an upload schedule that I was really religious with, and I stuck to, you know, religiously. Like, I, I wouldn't uh, change it. I wouldn't alter it. This was like two years ago. And uh, Club and Country was like an evening series back in FIFA 15 with Racing Santander. Uh, this year, I tried to make it as main of a series as my other series as well, but it hasn't really had as many views as I was hoping. So because of that, what I'm doing is bringing back Club and Country, but it's going to be an even uh, an evening series. It'll only be uploaded uh, during weekday and possibly weekend evenings as well, or maybe on the week uh, weekend mornings from time to time, but mainly during the weekday evenings. This series will come back as like a bonus series, whilst my Road to Glory career mode was Paoli, which if you guys haven't seen by the way, please do check it out. I'll leave a link to the playlist in the description down below. That's going to be my afternoon series, but also in the evenings as well, I'm going to be soon starting one of three new projects which I plan to do. Either a football manager series, a my, play ser a my player series, or the experiment part two. If you didn't watch the experiment, it was a series I did in uh, FIFA 15. Um, I'll leave a link to that in the description as well. Um, one of those three things will be starting within the next three or four weeks, and that will sort of like share the road to a club and country in the evening whilst my St. Pauli career mode continues to be uploaded in the afternoon. So what we'll have is like episode of Road to Glory, uh, career mode St. Pauli every single afternoon in the weekdays and then on like Monday and Tuesday we'll have like club and country and then on like Thursday and Friday we'll have football manager for example and then on Wednesday maybe who to sign for. So I'm going to try and do double uploads again during the week. I've been doing like double uploads like what five, uh, four or five days maybe out of the, uh, the week but uh, on one or two or possibly three or four sometimes only doing single uploads but I try my best to get back on that old schedule I had it's gonna be a lot of hard work and I know that it's very hard to stick with it really really is it takes up an awful lot of time but I feel like I've been slacking personally and whilst I've still been producing a lot of good videos I've had a lot of personal things going on which I don't really want to talk about but they're really really important um, I've, I've, I've really let myself down and uh, because of that, I've got to get back to my old upload schedule and uh, I, I feel it's only fair that I produce these sort of episodes in the evening as they don't take as much time as um, um, something like uh, the youth club would do, for example. It's just only fair, right? So anyway, that's what I plan to do regardless. Just wanted to briefly discuss that. I say briefly. <laughs> We're like four minutes into the episode. <laughs> just wanted to discuss that. Uh, club and Country's back. I'm going to start doing some Football Manager very soon in the next two to three weeks, or my player, or the experiment. One of those three things will start very soon as well. And uh, they'll be sharing an evening schedule along with Club and Country, whilst the RTG career mode is uploaded every single afternoon. Ooh, deep breath. Done. Good. Okay, so hopefully you guys are out with that, and, uh, and let's get into the episode. So, we're starting off Season 5 then, and uh, we've already had like four and a half minutes worth of the episode gone down the drain already. Uh, hopefully you guys have been uh, keeping up with what's been going on in the screen right now as well, and what's been happening. Uh, now, obviously, uh, I want us to sign Ryan Gould this season. It is Season 5. The £16 million budget means we're £9 million uh, short of uh, being able to afford Ryan Gould's valuation fee of £25 million, but hopefully we'll get 
hold of the guy as I have a few tricks up my sleeve and hopefully will convince him to come back to Scotland. But also you would have seen there, Logan Reed went to Chelsea on a short term loan. Now you might be wondering why that is if you've not been keeping up to date with the series. Logan of course has been our number one since midway through season one and he's the goalkeeper for St Johnston and for uh, Scotland as well. I've accepted a short term loan. I'm going to recall him straight away. It will cost us about one and a half thousand pounds. It's peanuts really, absolute pennies. We don't care about that at all. But the reason I'm doing that is because he's had a contract dispute with the club. He feels he's too big for the team, doesn't want to sign a new contract. We've given him like 10 already and he keeps on saying, nope, 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 nope. I want to leave the club when my contract runs out. He's still got two years left on his deal. So I recalled him straight away, gave him a new contract and hopefully now this will get rid of that stupid morale problem he had saying he was too big for the club and wasn't going to sign a new contract. So he's been recalled from his loan spell. He's back at the club. We've given him a contract. Hopefully he will decide to stay and extend his stay here at McDermott Park. But also uh, Ewan McDonald, the cam version, was wanted by Wolves. They wanted to bring him to Molyneux and I didn't really want to sell the guy but I've accepted a Leicester valuation bid for him because first of all it's confusing having two Ewan McDonalds here and uh, the centre forward is of course the far more important one but also because we really want to sign Ryan Gould this season. I briefly touched on it earlier. We really, really want to sign Ryan Gould because he is, did I, did I mention it earlier? I might have done. But uh, I want to sign Ryan Gould because he is the best Scottish player in the game right now. He is 83 overall. And realistically, this is probably the only season or possibly next season when we can bring him to McDermott Park. And I just don't want to miss out on ever having Ryan Gould. He's the highest potential Scottish player in the game. I don't want to miss out on signing Ryan Gould. And I want it to be this season as well. We haven't made a massive signing yet in this series due to our small transfer budgets year after year. This is the time to bring Ryan Gould in. I'm confident we can get him, hopefully, touch wood. And uh, because of that, we'll need to sell one or two players to make way for Ryan Gould. So one will be the cam version of Ewan McDonald, as well as this guy as well, which I'm going to reluctantly accept a bid from if the right deal comes in. Not Oliver Wilson. But uh, Ryan Christie, wanted by both Benfica and the French side Lille as well. We've asked for £15 million pounds for both of those, uh, from, uh, from both of those clubs for that player. But I feel like Christie needs to go in order to bring in Ryan Gould. There's not a single player right now in the St. Johnston team that we can sell that will give us enough money to bring in Ryan Gould that's in a position where it will be similar to Ryan Gould's position. They're both cams, obviously Christie and Gould, and also a player that's uh, not quite as good right now. So Christie is the only player we can really get rid of in order to sign Ryan Gould. And that's why I feel like in order to make way for Gordy, we need to cut one or two players. Ewan, as you can see, is already gone uh, to uh, Molyneux. What a steal, by the way, that is, as uh, Logan Reed says his contract there. £3.4 million for a 19-year-old with 95 long shots. Gutted to let him go, but I uh, had, to, had to do it, really, to raise as much money as possible. But uh, Benfica came back to us regarding Ryan Christie, said he gave us £12.5 million, and I was like, well, that's that's not the £15 million I was after, as uh, Sean Dyche can get lost here after a, a ridiculous bid for Callum Patterson, a physical beast who's going out absolutely nowhere. But for £12.5 million for Christie, we make a profit on the guy. He's only been here for one season. He lost his place in the first 11 last year to the ginger nut playing Cam instead, taking his place. Christie is a bench player, but I just, I don't know. He was the league's uh, leader in assists last season. You guys know how much I love those assists. I'd hate to cut the guy, but again, I feel like it has to be done in order to sign Ryan Gould. So I think Christie is going to go to uh, Benfica. Lille came back to us and said it only gives us £7.5 million for Christie, which is half what we were after so I said forget it he's, he's not going to you then that's that's not good enough I think I actually asked for 15 million pounds but they're not going to come back with that because they know they're not going to meet that 15 million pound of uh, my valuation um as uh they came for Reed here as well Logan Reed Monaco wanted him but of course he's just signed a new deal so he's going absolutely nowhere um yeah, with Ryan Gould, we, we need to sell Ryan Christie in order to bring him in. And it would be a shame because it would be the first time I've sold a player who's in my Scotland squad right now. And it, it, it kind of, it, it feels like we're taking a step backwards because obviously with, with this career, what we want is the whole Scottish team to be St. Johnston players as well. So if we're selling a player that's already in the Scotland team right now, as well as being a St. Johnston player, we're taking a step backwards. I don't even like selling youth players that come through the academy because I have a long-term vision of them one day representing Scotland like so many of them have. So selling Ryan Christie would make absolutely no sense in that department. But in order to bring in the better player, 
In order to bring in the best player that Scotland currently have right now, we need to do it. So Christie reluctantly is going to Benfica for £12.5 million. I didn't want to sell him, but I realised this is the only player we can cut from our team that will give us the funds to be able to sign Ryan Gould. So Christie's going absolutely gutted. I spent about five, million, five minutes talking about it, but I genuinely am gutted because I really do like this guy. But he is going to Portugal and hopefully will bring a uh, player currently in Portugal back to Scotland in a little bit of a swap. So yeah, Christie's gone to Benfica, 12.5 million pounds, a little bit of a, uh, a shame that, and I liked it as well, like he, he literally left the club the day after I advanced, after accepting the deal, he couldn't wait to go, he was like, Jesus Christ, Tox man, seriously, I led the lead in assists last year, and you dropped me halfway through the season for the ginger nut, and now you're selling me as well, but I was like, sorry Ryan, you gotta go mate, I need the money, so Christie's gone to Benfica, and, uh, and that's just how it is, is uh, Norwich putting a bit of a Tony Watt there, how about that, of around 10 million pounds, back to back golden boot winner Tony Watt for 10 million pound to try and get into Carrow Road I was like what what are you smoking mate seriously forget it he's going nowhere so Tony's certainly not getting cut but Christie's gone it was a shame to let him go but uh, one interesting thing is that Benfica are now only paying him 13 grand a week now I can't remember how much we were paying him but it was certainly a lot more than that so Benfica have given Christie a wage decrease he just couldn't wait to, uh, get, uh, wait to get to Lisbon he just wanted to leave Scotland he was, he was fed up with the, uh, the overcast weather he wanted to go somewhere sunnier so he was it was totally fine taking a pay cut. But uh, I guess the best thing about that is that long-term business there is probably good because it means that now we sold Christie for more than his valuation. He's not worth... 12 and a half million pounds. We're worth about seven, eight million pounds. Next year, if we want to, we can just buy him back. So think about the long-term future. We can buy him back if we want to next season. It'll be totally fine. But uh, anyway, we put the valuation bid for Ryan Gould. We shall wait and see what Sporting say. Honestly, I, I feel like we have to get him now. Like now we've sold Christie. If we don't end up with Ryan Gould, it'll be a total choke. But I feel like we've now got the money to bring him in. We've got about 30 million pounds in our disposal. We've got a bit more money for getting through the preseason tournament as well and getting into the semi-finals where we'll take on the French side Monaco I feel like now we have the funds to bring in Ryan Gould. If we don't sign him, it will be an absolute joke. But what I was really annoyed about is that after this, then uh, Sporting came back to us regarding Ryan Gould and said they wanted £47 million for Gouldy. And I was like, what the hell? Are you actually having a laugh? Like, we finally got about £30 million in our kitty. That should be enough. £5 million over his current valuation. They want £47 million for him. And it's because Sporting know what we're doing. They know what we're all about. They know what we're up to. We're only signing Scottish players and so they think well We're gonna hold them to ransom and make them pay out their backside because we've got the best Scottish player So clearly we can we can milk these guys and I was like this is an absolute joke mate Seriously, so I put in a 30 million pound bid for uh, for Goldie and I sort of had a bit of a meltdown here I was like how much more do you want 999 million? So I put in a 30 million pound bid. Well, we wait, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll wait and see what Sporting say But uh, I'll tell you if, if we don't end up signing Ryan Gould and uh, and they continue to state 47 million pounds which we'll never be able to afford. We're going to have £30 million in our budget and no one to bring in. Maybe Andrew Robertson, but then we'll have Kieran Tierney, Stephen Kingsley and Robertson. Three good left backs. What's the point? So, yeah, we're kind of, we're a little bit worried right now due to that reject there from Sporting and saying they wanted £47 million. I'm a little bit fearful, but anyway, we made it for our pre-season uh, tournament semi-final, beating Monaco by three goals to nil to set up a pre-season tournament final against the group... Uh, the group runners up and the team that beat us in the group Villarreal so we've taken on Villarreal in the pre-season tournament final and this was our first chance at a trophy our first shot at silverware if we could beat Villarreal this will be the first trophy we've picked up in the entire series so far and yes I know it's non-competitive it doesn't really count I get it but listen it's St Johnston we've not won anything in four seasons so I'm going to celebrate it like it's the Champions League if we end up winning it so we will take on Villarreal then in the pre-season tournament final. I did pick my strongest versus them because I was thinking now we got to a final even if it is non-competitive. We can't blow this. We can't slip up now. We need to make sure we get our first piece of silverware and that is why 20 minutes into the game we will concede the first goal of the game. <laughs> as Villarreal took the lead straight away through Mario Gaspar of all players. Pato chested a corner, flicked it into the right back who volleyed it in, into the bottom corner and I was like, well this is great isn't it? It's the pre-season tournament final and we're about to choke thanks to the right back scoring the goal and making it 1-0 and I was like, oh my goodness gracious me. At this point I genuinely had my head in my hands. I was thinking, no way are we going to lose this. Absolutely no way. Villarreal wants St Johnston nil and the worst possible start to the final. We tried to respond instantly 
Sadly, Ewan McDonald turning a couple of yellow shirts and getting himself forward, but Sergio Asenjo made a great save before Victor Ruiz casually got the ball clear as it was still 1-0. And in the 31st minute, how about this as well? Pato went to shoot, Barry tackled him and almost put the ball into the bottom corner after a nonchalant high five with, uh, with uh, Dougie Reed there. Barry almost scoring an own goal. That would have been typical as it was still 1-0. But Villarreal had the better first half and they were really, really pressing, looking for a second goal. They were, they were far superior to us in the first half. We had our second attempt just before the break. Burke spurned it though and smashed it over the bar and into orbit and it was still 1-0. So Villarreal had the better first half, no doubt about it. It should have said we had two shots, but uh, still, they were the better team, no doubt, and dominated possession too. And with 71 minutes in the, on the uh, clock, we were still trailing by a goal, and it was looking like Villarreal were going to win this game, and we were going to choke in the final until Ewan McDonald, who was the top scorer of the preseason tournament, latched onto a Ryan Fraser through ball, slipped but still managed to put the ball into the bottom corner with the weaker right foot, and you can see Murray Davidson came off the bench to celebrate with with the players as well in uh, his final ever pre-season with St. Johnston. So 1-1, back on level terms. McDonald with the finish. He has really picked it up since the start of last season. And he is such a much more, you know, bigger goal threat now. So 1-1 and we are back on level terms. And uh, deservedly so as well. Because in the second half, we really picked it up and were the strongest side. But it was how the game was finished after 90 minutes. Final score, 1-1 in the final. So a penalty shootout would separate the Spanish side and the Scottish side. And after what happened... Happened in the summer in the Euros, exiting the competition after being knocked out by Germany on the penalty shootout. I was thinking, well, this is the last thing I want. The very next game in the series to have a penalty shootout with a club where hopefully we'll win our first ever trophy. This is the last thing I want. But it was the situation and we will take on Villarreal in a penalty shootout to decide who wins the pre-season tournament. Well, Pato would stand up and take the first penalty. The Brazilian striker would take on Logan Reed from 12 yards and Reed would make the save absolutely awesome only saved one penalty against Germany but would make the save there and get us off to the best possible start Tony will take our first penalty though and sadly our top scorer of last year and the year before was denied by Sergio Asenjo so 0 from 2 for both teams and it was still 0-0 uh, Villarreal scored the second penalty though and uh, made it 1-0 and uh, McBurney would then cancel that one out though smashing the boys to the roof of the net and making it 1-1 through two penalties each Lopez would then take the third penalty for Villarreal and Reed guessed the right way. He went down to his left, but sadly couldn't make the save when he really should have done. But it was still 2 1 as Villarreal went back in front. But Ryan Fraser sent Asenjo the wrong way from the next penalty, cancelling it out and making it 2 2. Trigueros then took the penultimate penalty for Villarreal. It was a long run up against Logan Reed, but unfortunately curled the ball in with a really composed spot kick to make it 3 2. Murray Davidson then took our next one and smashed the ball into the top corner despite. Asenjo dive in the right way. Castellejo then took the final penalty for Villarreal and as you'll see, scored it as well, sending Reed the wrong way. And our fifth penalty kick taker was old man Barry, the captain. Barry Hamilton had to score, otherwise we would go out and no hesitation smash the ball into the top corner to make it 4-4 and send it into sudden death. Masashi then took the next one, but Reed made the save, redeemed himself, clawed it out of his palm just before it went into the back of the net to keep us in the shootout and give us a chance to win it. Callum Patterson then took our sixth penalty and won the shootout, put it into the top corner, belly flopped with the celebration because finally, as we begin season five, St. Johnston have won a trophy. And I know what you guys are going to be saying. It doesn't count. It's a pre-season tournament, Docs. And I know you're right. I am, I am totally open to believing that is the case. The pre-season tournament doesn't matter, I know, but... It's still a trophy. It still counts for me. We've finally won something. We win the preseason tournament. Any other career mode, I couldn't care less. But due to the heartbreak in this one, four straight years without some silverware for club or country, it's about time we have our names on some sort of silverware. And it ends up being a preseason tournament, which, let's be honest here, again, in any other series, I wouldn't care about at all. But anyway, we've done it. It's our first piece of silverware. And I'll tell you this as well. When Barry was taking our penalty 
Just before I took it, I was like, if he misses this, I will never, ever, ever live it down. <laughs> I will never live it down. But in the end, it turned out to be the catalyst that helped us win the shootout and turn it in our favor. Because the very next penalty, Villarreal missed it. Masashi had it denied by Reed. Reed gained like superpowers after ben uh, Barry's penalty. He was like, Jesus Christ, mate. I've got to turn up now. And uh, Masashi was too intimidated. He was just too scared of the old boy. But uh, still, we win it. And uh, Barry lifts some silverware for the first time in the series. And I tell you this now, I'm hoping that that is going to spark a chain reaction. And this year, you're going to win some proper trophies as well. FA Cup, Premier League, hell, even the Champions League. Let's go for a treble this season. I'm confident now. We finally exercised those demons. We've lifted the curse. We've won a trophy. We are going to win some competitive ones this season. I am confident of it. You can quote me on it. We're going to win something this year. I don't know what it'll be, but we will win some trophies this season. Oh, thank God for that. We finally won one, though. And, um, yeah, I'm delighted. And, again, to exercise those demons from... Um, from the summer as well, losing the shootout to Germany and then beating Villarreal on penalties. That was absolutely awesome. We will end today's episode of Club and Country there, guys. So a big thank you for watching. I really hope you have enjoyed watching the first episode of Season 5. Sadly, we end on a negative note despite winning our first trophy. Sporting once again rejected our bid. We want £47 million for Ryan Gould. We'll put in £35 million, though, and wait and see what they say to our third offer. And, oh, please, Sporting, please accept that. But much love to you, though. Have a great Monday, everyone. I hope you guys are excited for the upcoming change to my channel as well have a great day please leave a like enjoy the video and i'll see you for the next episode of club and country featuring our first games of season five very soon